I'm Ray Swartz here in Bold Park in Perth, enjoying the company of this magnificent Tuat tree. Over the last year, I've been filming native forest logging operations run by our government on publicly owned land between the towns of Pemberton and Margaret River. It's called forest management and affects approximately 850,000 hectares. That's about 1.9 million acres of unprotected native forests. Now their future is at a crossroad. So what our Labor government have done is to initiate a survey to help them decide which road they are going to take. And good on them. What this means is that for the first time, every West Australian gets a real chance in determining the fate of those 850,000 hectares. Now it's helpful to remember here that the southwest forests of WA qualify as a global biodiversity hotspot. That might sound great, but it's not, because to qualify you have to destroy at least 70% of the habitat in that hotspot. So that title, given to us by the international community, is pretty damning. And it's where you'll find the 850,000 hectares of native forest that's up for logging. Our Cary, Jarra and Mary forests grow nowhere else in the world. And what few people realise is that they are still being logged at a rate of 10 football fields every single day. But it gets worse. Over 80% of the timber that comes out of those forests ends up as waste, charcoal, firewood or pulp. Trees in excess of two, three, even 400 years old are still being logged. It's like taking a bulldozer to mingle and reef. Only a handful of the 850 plant species found in our Jarrah forests are valued by industry. The amount of collateral damage and waste from logging is staggering. I've seen it firsthand, it's like a war zone. What survives the logging, dozing and burning has virtually no habitat to return to. Today's Jarrah forests hardly resemble the forests of old, and less so with every consecutive logging. They're suffering a death by a thousand cuts. And it's just as bad in the carry forests, where they virtually clear everything, pushing all the tree canopies, unwanted trees, and understory into windrows to be burnt. It's then replanted to create a carry plantation. What they're doing here is turning diverse, resilient ecosystems into mostly monocultures. They're trying to make an unprofitable industry profitable. You know, the years of regular logging and burning has had a profound effect on our forests. The thousands of kilometres of roads and landings built to handle huge machines and road trains further fragments our forests. It accelerates weed infestation, disease and allows easy access to feral animals. The logging itself compacts the soil, causes erosion, contributes to climate change, diminishing rainfall and biodiversity loss. It's the perfect storm, totally unsustainable. An ongoing tragedy that runs at a loss. There's just no upside here. It makes no sense on so many fronts. This industry should have ended 40 years ago along with whaling. You know, here we are staring down the barrel of a climate and an ecological crisis. You know, fortunately, it's a crisis that's relatively easy to solve. This isn't about something we have to do. It's about something we have to stop doing. That's logging our native forests. But as mentioned, you know, we're lucky here. Our government wants to hear from us, which is great. You know, this is real democracy where the people get to have a say. And what I would argue is one of the most pressing environmental issues of our time. Trees, forests are so important that not only were they critical in creating a livable world, they are critical in making sure it stays that way. I mean, we share 50% of their DNA. You know, it makes sense that most people have a soft spot for trees, just as they do for whales. I've seen, once again, firsthand how it takes less than two minutes to drop a jarrah or a carry that's taken 200 plus years to grow. You know, they've shaded this country for eight generations of humans, and, and they would have done so for many more if we'd let them. Trees, forests, are one of our greatest stores of carbon. They demand so little and give so much. I really hope that the 20 minutes it'll take most people to do this survey isn't asking too much of them. I don't think so. When you remember that if, if our forests lose, we lose. 
I heard David Attenborough say recently that self-interest is in the past and our common interest is our future. The need for healthy forests, rivers and oceans is now more than ever our common interest. Look, I could wrap it on, but I think I've said enough. And, and, I, and you don't have to take my word for it. There are plenty of well-respected and qualified people who love forests as much as, as I do and, and believe they should be left standing. You know, people like Fiona Stanley, Australian of the Year. Tim Flannery, another Australian of the Year. We've got Ben Elton, Comedian of the Year. He's not, but I, he's damn funny and, 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 he, and he knows the importance of forests. And, and you've got Kingsley Dixon, Scientist of the Year. You've got Carmen Lawrence, Best Ex-Premier of the Year. You've, look, even my parents, my mum and dad, knew how important forests were. And then, of course, there's, there's David Attenborough, who at 95 makes a, a whole lot of wise elders in our community look young. Some of them have got together and formed a group called Nanas for Native Forests. They've been stitching leaves and, and getting about, look, making a bit of a nuisance of themselves, but, but for a damn good cause. I mean, it's, it's our future. Anyway, you could, you could join them, get a leaf, like one of these, find a quiet moment, reflect on how special life is and, and our forests are. I would love to create history here, but it's going to take more than just a few of us. So please join me and, and hopefully tens of thousands of West Australians who, you know, like the Nanas, have something to say and find the time and the courage to say it. You know, these are our forests and it's our future. And we're getting a chance to decide to create history here. So hell, let's do it. Look, just a heads up here. This survey does contain a couple of curly questions. Now to help you navigate the survey, the WA Forest Alliance have created a guide. I've included two links, one to their survey help guide and the other to the government online survey itself. You'll find them both at the end of this video. Remember, there's a reason we've become a global biodiversity hotspot, and it's not something to be proud of. It's critical that we all do our bit and complete the forest survey. But equally important is spreading the word about this survey. And please, can you share this video with as many people as possible? The survey finishes August the 1st, so we don't have a lot of time. I can't stress enough. This is the best chance we've ever had to let our government know that we want an end to logging our beautiful southwest native forests. Thank you.